Hi there, Steve Coffin. Yeah, it's going. All right. Last video, I said that I felt that I had sort of failed in my efforts to learn Croatian. Uh, again, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to look here. I got the sun in my eyes, but I want to go back. I want to take that back. I don't think there is failure in language learning. There is just the need to continue what you're doing, the need for more time. By the way, I'm sitting on our little balcony here in Omish. Uh, you can hear people eating lunch down in the courtyard. It's a lovely little town here. Uh, you know, apparently it was the home of pirates. And, uh, but it was a great place for us to use as a base. From here we went north to Zadar, south as far as Dubrovnik, into uh, Sarajevo in Bosnia, and had an absolutely spectacular visit to Croatia and Bosnia. I heartily recommend both places. We didn't get to Montenegro or Serbia, but that's for next time. Now, I said in the previous video that I had worked hard for 10 days on our mini stories at Link to bring my Serbo-Croatian up to a level where I, th I had hoped that I might be able to communicate with people here in Croatia. And I said that I failed. I failed because on the one hand, I, I just couldn't find the words when I tried to speak. And second of all, because people in Croatia, at least in the tourist areas, all speak English very, very well. So that was, they just weren't going to humor me. They, are, they work in a restaurant, they work in a store, they have work to do. They're not going to, they're not my language tutor. And so I said I kind of failed there. But I want to take that back because actually I realized, and it's a good experience for me, I realized that in language learning there is no failure. There is insufficient time. Language learning takes time. It takes time for the brain to get used to a new language, even for a related, a language that's related to one that you know. I had that experience in trying to learn Portuguese, even though I already knew Spanish and French. It takes time. This is a process of getting used to the language. It's not a process of deliberately trying to learn something. And this getting used to takes time. It takes exposure, listening, reading, speaking. And I simply haven't had enough time with Croatian. However, since the last time we spoke, uh, a number of things have happened. First of all, while in Croatia, I haven't been able to spend as much time with my mini stories and with my work on Link, which in a way is a good thing because, uh, you know, that period of benign neglect, I found that having left it for a few days when I went back to the same material, it was fresher. I was noticing things that I hadn't, that I had, I thought I had noticed and learned, but I had forgotten. The second thing was up in Sarajevo, there were quite a few people who didn't speak English. Uh, also, going into Dubrovnik, which is a spectacular uh, site, uh, we had a, uh, a taxi driver, an Uber driver from uh, Mostar in uh, Bosnia, and he didn't speak English. And I was communicating with, with these people quite well. We were also in a, in a shop uh, on our way back from Korchula, and the lady there didn't speak English, and my wife was buying something, and I was able to explain and have a little chit chat, all in Serbo, Croat, Croatian, whatever. And of course, there's always these words that are missing, but I'm finding more and more of them. And then when I go back to working with my many stories, I notice things, especially the key words like when, why, because, that I know, and yet when I need them in a discussion, I can't find them, and I'll see them again, and it reinforces itself. And uh, so I find that I am starting to get used to the language. In other words, there is no failure. Whatever I have put into the language, it's there. It might fade a bit. I might forget some things, but I can always go back to it. It's like having blazed a trail through the snow if you're cross-country skiing. And if you pass by a couple of hours later and it's been snowing, the tracks will be sort of covered, but it won't be as hard as the first time and very quickly you start gliding and picking up speed. So there is no failure. There's just the need to have patience and to be a little bit realistic. It does take time, but, but the brain will, even you know, not having looked at the Croatian, when I go back to it again and rediscover those words, it's kind of reinforced. So um, I guess I wanna just end off, we're going tomorrow to Spain, 
A, with, with the sense that I'm very happy with the effort that I put into Serbo-Croatian. Croatian, uh, not only do I find that I'm more and more able to communicate, uh, on link I bring in newspaper articles, this is from Serbian newspapers, I can read them, I'm looking up words, but it's not difficult, it's not difficult. A lot of words there that I know from other Slavic languages or that I've already learned in Serbo-Croatian. So I am making progress, it's not a failure. There's no point in, in, in assuming that you're going to be able to fluently speak a language after such a short period of time. There's a gestation period where the brain gets used to the language. That's the one thing. And the other thing is I heartily recommend a visit to Croatia and Bosnia. I haven't been to Montenegro and Serbia and I'm sure that there are wonderful things to be seen there as well and it is the same language. So I'm attracted now to this part of the world so I've discovered I even bought some books. I bought, uh, you know, because I on link I've been going through this, uh, the bridge over the Drina, by Ivo Andrić, which is very difficult for me. But I bought the book in Serbo-Croatian in the Latin alphabet, so that one day maybe I'll be able to read that without the help of, of link. So there is no failure. There is no wasted effort. Whatever we put into our language learning, it's all positive. It's an investment in future enjoyment. On, on many levels. So, the next video will be from Spain. Bye for now.